tutorial of how to teach the tic-tac-toe player for Small Basic. This um, is an advanced recipe and we've written a lot in the extensions so that the kids are actually creating a player rather than a game. So um, uh, it looks very, very short, but once you play with it, there's a lot in the variations. So we're going to go ahead and start by translating line three. So read that out for me. Start tic-tac-toe. And do a control space here and we're going to look for the tic-tac-toe object. Now in the tic-tac-toe object, there are a whole bunch of things for us to take a look at. So once I bring that up and do a dot, you'll see that we have a whole new API here. So I'm going to start just alphabetically and just explore the API. Get square by X is empty, play piece, start, turn for player O, turn for player X, get square by XY. So we have a bunch of different things in the API to take a look at. So uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to start the game. So we'll see, we just run it as a start and then we're going to do an F5 and run it and let it run and see that it's just completely random. So the first time O has one, we run it again. It's a lot of fun for the kids to see. In this case, O won again. So let's see if we can get a tie game or X to win because it's completely random. O is one. Looks like O is the winner all the time in the ones that we've run here. And O keeps winning, so we want to have X win. So in order to do that, we're going to create a method here, play in first empty spot when it's X's turn. So um, we're going to just create this as a sub, play in first empty spot. And we're going to put our end sub down here. And um, this is just a method stub. So um, we are just going to actually call this uh, without fully translating that. So it won't do anything. And the game still plays. And O keeps winning. So we're going to go ahead and remove the lines that we've translated. And then we're going to do right click format. So the next thing, um, if you can read line six for me. Do the following nine times. I'm going to say for i equals one, two, nine. And then we have to remember to put our end for. One of the things this recipe does is it, it's a great little refresher recipe because it has an if, a for, and a sub. So it helps kids to remember. Now again, we haven't done anything there. So we're going to not, uh, well we can run it, but it's not really going to do anything other than O is probably going to win again. Oh, X won this time because it's still random. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to translate line eight. Can you read that off for me? If the tic-tac-toe board is empty for the current square you are trying. Okay. So we're going to say if, and then the condition is what? Um, uh, we want to use the tic-tac-toe board yeah. and then we want to explore and we have an is empty method. So if it is empty, then Okay, now how do we put the current square in here? What do we do there? Um. Okay, so what we want to do is for the current square, so the current square is going to be i, because this takes um, one argument of square. Then we are going to continue to translate this. So can you read out line 10 for me? Player piece on that square on the tic-tac-toe board. So again, we're using the tic-tac-toe board API, and we're going to say play piece. And for the current square, which is going to be i again, so i, and then we're going to translate the next line, which is set the current value of i to 10. So how are we doing that? i equals 10. i equals 10. And of course, there are nine squares on the board. So um, we're going to do this, but we haven't, um, when we call this method, we haven't associated it with the beginning of the game. So when we run this, going to say, oops, we're missing a couple things first. We need to fix our errors. We've got a for loop. So just as I was saying, this is a great um, way to emphasize with the kids that we have a nested if, we have a for, and we have a sub. And the right click format really, really helps out there. So let's try and run it and see if we have any other errors. Okay. And this is great. We wrote this on purpose in the extensions. 
So you're trying to play the game, but you haven't started the game yet. So calling play piece is illegal. And we did this to show kids how custom error messages can um, really make um, programming better. So, oops, we're going to go out of there, and then we're going to go back, and we're going to translate this first line so we can actually play the way that we've written it. And I'm going to clean up some of these lines here, too. So um, clean this up, clean this up, because all these lines are right, and then do the format again. Okay, so, um, and we've started the game. And uh, can you read line one for me? Tell tic-tac-toe to call play first in first empty spot recipe below when it's X's turn. Okay, so we had just simply called that method. Now what we want to do is we want to use the tic-tac-toe object and we want to explore and we want to we want to play. So we're going to look around and see what we can find. Turn for player X. That looks pretty good. Now this is an event and we're going to call a method when it's X's turn. So this looks good. Turn for player X and we're going to say play in first empty spot, which is our method, which will put the X in the first empty spot. And because this is an event, when we call a method, we don't use parentheses. In fact, if I put parentheses in here, then let me just take this line out because we're no longer calling this statically, you'll see it returns an error because it's an event. So we need to take that out. And is that the right method name? Yep, play. Okay, and let's go ahead and run that. So there's the X plane. See the first empty spot? And let's see who wins this game. Oh, O has won. So let's see the next time if this strategy works better. Are you playing? Oh, there we won. So what we're doing with this recipe is really pretty advanced. We're actually creating a player rather than a board. So it has a lot of different variation. Obviously, you could change this method to turn for player O. Um, you could have different kinds of subs that you call. In this case, we're playing in the first empty spot. Variations could be play in the center spot, play in the left-hand spot, so on and so forth. So this is getting into sort of the next level of um, recipes for us, which are going to be games, and um, where we're going to have scenarios for the kids, and then they're going to fully code up the scenario by first translating the scenario into lines of English and then translating the English. So we'll be working on more recipes through the fall season and posting them up on the wiki. Um, keep checking at www.teachingkidsprogramming.org for more. Thank you.